for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For he sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Welcome to Soaring Like Eagles with Minister Larry Bertrand and Prophetess Mary Bertrand. Please sit back, enjoy the show, grab your Bible, and get ready for a word of inspiration and praise. Amen, amen. And we are again live, everybody. Thank you all for tuning in. This is another episode of Soaring Like Eagles with myself, none other than Larry Bertrand. And we are doing a special show on today, and I'm so glad that you all are tuning in. Um, And I do have a special guest on the line today as well. Let me go ahead and lock them in right now. I have um from New Orleans, Louisiana, my brother, Kirsten Hines, is on the line as well. How you doing, man? What's going on, brother? How you doing? Oh, man, I'm blessed. I can't complain. How you doing today? Man, I'm blessed, man. Just taking time to enjoy this Memorial Day and remember those who have served us and lost their lives and praying for those families and enjoying some good old backyard barbecue. Amen. Amen to that. And this is our Memorial Day. Um, We are honoring those who have sacrificed their lives for us um, by fighting for our country, fighting for us, right? So uh, we're happy about those people. We do thank God for them. Thank God for your sacrifice. Thank you all so much. Um, Also, today is a special day as well, and we wanted to take the time out today to really honor the graduates of 2020 this year. Um, I know it's kind of like hard uh, being a graduate in this year of 2020 because it's so much that they didn't get to experience, right? The the luncheons and the proms and the dances and the and the sporting events and all of the things that we enjoy about going to school, right? The social activities that we enjoy about going to school, we didn't have to, we didn't get to enjoy that this year, but God is still good. And nevertheless, they're still graduating and moving on to the next to the next grade and to the next level, right? So we want to take the time and honor that today. And with that being said, I have three graduates right here of 2020 sitting right here at the table with me today. I have Jordan, I have Jerron, and I also have Devin as well. So very proud of these three young men and their um and their commitment to excellence and achievement, and the fact that they are now graduating and going on to high school. So we are definitely proud of um, these young men here, especially proud of um, of one in particular that's sitting next to me because he's doing a dual enrollment and going to be doing high school and college. Amen. So wow. definitely um, excited for everything that, that the Lord has in store for him as well. And I believe that these, I honestly believe that these graduates are called to something special. You know what I'm saying? To have to endure this in the year of your graduation lets me know that you're called for something special. And I believe that each of you are able to do great things and that your future is in your hands. And that as long as you are able, as long as you tap into the calling that God has for your life, there's nothing, understand nothing that you would not be able to do. The Bible says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Um, keep that in mind, because there's going to be people who tell you can't do this, people who tell you can't do that, people who try to talk you out of career, talk you out of careers, and talk you out of your goals and out of your dreams. But I want you all to understand that as long as you all stay focused and follow and follow the word of God, there is nothing, nothing that you all can do. Amen. Um, so I want to go ahead and give um these graduates the opportunity to just really introduce themselves and just say um, what it does it mean to graduate right now? What does it mean to you to graduate right now? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pass the mic around and I'm going to let them go ahead and just do their thing for a minute. Yeah. Introduce yourself and say what it means. My name is Jordan Muhammad and what graduating mean is a new start for something. 
My, my name is Ron Washington. I'm so glad that I'm going to the next day and I'm going to have a successful career. Amen. My name is my name is Devin Muhammad, and I'm so happy that I'm going to high school and college at the same time next year, and I have a lot in store for that year, and I can't wait. Amen, amen, amen. I'm so happy once again for all of these graduates of 2020, amen. Uh, these are just a few, but there's so many other um, people who are joining with us today um, who have graduated this year. And we want, to, we want to say that we definitely thank God for you. Amen, amen. We believe that your future is in your hands. Um, anything? That you want to say before I me, mean, we die. I know we're gonna dive into it in just a little bit. But anything you want to say right now to these three graduates sitting right here, Kirsten? Uh, yeah, man. I want to encourage y'all to continue to aim towards your goals. Continue to aim towards what God is placing in your heart. Um, nothing is impossible. If anybody tell you that it's impossible to do something. Remember, nothing is impossible because God you serve, and he will always, 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 he will always make a way out of no way for you. You just got to stay on the right path, keep the right mindset, and always remember to keep God first. If you keep him first, he'll take care of you first. Amen, amen. And that's really what we want to talk about is God's grace and God's favor. Amen. Um, I believe for each graduate who's here and who's listening in and tuning in and who's even experiencing graduation on this year, that there's grace and favor over your life and over your destiny. Amen. And um, one thing I wanted to say about it, too, is that um, it reminds me of a Bible verse where it says, we've been made endures for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Right? Um, and when I think about this, what we're going through today, when I think about this pandemic, I understand that this right here is a moment where we have to endure, right? But joy comes in the morning. So there's still joy after this pandemic. There's still joy after COVID-19. There's still joy after the coronavirus, right? So even though we're enduring this right now, and this is what we have to go through right now, troubles don't last always. And that's the one thing that I want to graduates to understand that because when you go through life, you're going to go through many troubles, many obstacles, many challenges, and many changes. Even going into high school, there's going to be different challenges and changes that you're going to have to endure. And um, even things are going to get challenging for you all as you all are entering into your new level in life. But understand that just like the coronavirus, understand that whatever it is that you're going through, this too shall pass, right? Um, so I'm so happy about that. Before we go ahead and really just dive into this, I want to just take a moment and um and play a song. So if we can just get a song going really quickly, and then we're going to go ahead and just really dive into the message that we have for our graduates today. Um, so... And the song I'm going to play today is going to be, um, let's go ahead and play Dre Star Swag. Amen. Dre Star Swag. Jesus Christ 
is my champion. Get on the team and you have to win. He has delivered me like Daniel Dan and I'm saved by his grace and his mercy. Amen. Yeah, I'm covered by his blood. I got my freedom back. It was his grace. It was his love. That's where the kingdom back. I'm saved with an amazing grace. Grace. And we call that swag. Saved with an amazing grace. Grace. And we call that swag. Hold up. Hold up. Let me take a praise break. Hallelujah. I'm swagged out. Say with an amazing grace. Yeah. I'm swagged out. Say by his grace through faith. I am. Christ the lawyer and the judge who never lost a case. I died to my flesh. He's six feet in the grave. Jesus, he my hero. And he rose in three days. True swear belongs to him because he truly reigns. He truly saves. God so snubbed the world. He truly gave. Yeah, I'm covered by his blood. I got my freedom back. It was his grace. It was his love. That's where the kingdom back. I'm saved with an amazing grace. Grace. And we call that swag, say with an amazing grace, grace. And we call that swag. My spirit's lit like a candlestick. Can you handle it? I'm swagging. My savior lives and my prayer is that men will submit to the captain. Spirit filled to the maximum. We work the field like a tractor truck. Got the swag, homie, that's what's up. Been real of men and patch them up. We count them souls like Dracula. Leave 99 just for the one. Flipping Satan like a spatula. And putting demons back on the run. Spirit filled to the maximum. We work the field like a tractor truck. Yo, I got the swag and that's from my dad. The Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost from that swag. Yeah, I'm covered by his blood. I got my freedom back. It was his grace. It was his love. That's where the kingdom back. I'm saved with an amazing grace. Grace. And we call that swag, say with an amazing grace, grace. And we call that swag. All right, that was Jason Rar swag. Swag, amen. We want to talk about the swag of all of our graduates of 2020. Y'all got to have some amazing swag to deal with what's going on. So, amen to the swag, right? Um, I want to go ahead and um, talk to the graduates that's here. One more time, I want to ask um, each of the graduates who are sitting at this table right now, what does it, uh, how do you feel um, graduating um, in the midst of this pandemic? Is it scary or are you just still encouraged? How does it feel to be graduating in the midst of this pandemic? Well, it feels, I'm like, it feels uh, feel scary. Uh, it's so scary, and I don't worry. I don't worry about it at the same time because the more I worry about it, the more I get like I get um like nervous about it, and I think I'm getting a panic. And panicking during the quarantine is not good. So you, so you gotta so you gotta stay a little profile and don't worry about it. Just play some video games, read comics, read books, and all, watch TV and all that stuff. So yeah, and try my best to not stay scared during the quarantine. It's, it's scary for me because um uh it's gonna be hard like to uh have a job because and it takes you a lot of, a lot of rules to go to team because uh, of the coronavirus so it, it's scary. Uh, I think that if um, oh my God. Amen, amen. Um so, I mean, that's just really a thought. I just really wanted to see what some of our young people were thinking and feeling, um, you know, going through this quarantine and then and being quarantined in the midst of graduation time. Um, I know there's so many things that we look forward to during graduation, right? I know we look forward to the luncheons, right? Or even in eighth grade, we have the luncheons that we go to. We have the different end-of-the-year activities. We even just have that moment where we get to, be with our friends, right, for that last day, and just get to say bye to all of our friends. So I do know that all of that has to be just something right there in itself. Um, 
If anybody want to say anything about you, um, you know how it feels like to be around your friends in this graduation process. It's it's warm because you stuck at house all day with the same people. So it's warm for you. Can I say that name or two? No, you don't say the name. It don't feel right. It doesn't feel right not being by your friend. Yeah. Oh, I I don't think it's boring at all. Um, I mostly when I'm in the house, I mostly I just study um video uh software development and. And video game development, and also uh, hang out with my 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 cousin and my best friend. And it's it's, it's in the middle. It's like I'm bored and I'm active. Amen, amen. Um, and I want to just touch on that because I know how it kids be trying. You know, when you see, I know it's one thing about it that when we are growing up, right? We start seeing all of the other graduating classes who are graduating and moving forward, and we just wait for our time. While we wait patiently for our time to come, where that's us walking across that stage, or that's us enjoying that last day, and that's us who's about to make it to the next level, right? So to go through that waiting process, and then all of a sudden your time comes, and it's totally different, and your experience is totally different. It's just kind of like it can make you feel some type of way sometimes. But you all are very smart children. I can see that already. And you all have um, been able to cope well with everything that's going on. But you all still seem to be good in your mental health, even in the aspects of everything. So that's a good thing as well. Um, Pastor Kirsten, anything you want to say to respond to what they just said? Uh, no, not really. You know, I'm, again, y'all just continue to stay prayerful. Um, everything mm-hmm. I got to say is going to be in the message for y'all. I'm not even going to lie to you. When I, <laughs> I give y'all this message, I'm just trying to hold on to my little message and not give uh, give it out too much. But um, mm-hmm. like I said, y'all just remain prayerful. Pray for everyone mm-hmm. who's lost people through this time. And you have no reason to fear. You have no reason to be afraid. Because, again, you know who your father in heaven is. And he will if you have faith. I know a lot of times we misjudge the concept of faith, but if you have faith, he will provide for you. He will bring you. Amen. 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 And so that's what I wanted to do today's um, today's message or today's topic on the graduating class of 2020. Um, and one thing about it, I wanted my brother to join me on this topic because he did just a dynamic job yesterday with the, um, celebrating with his church graduates. So um, I definitely wanted to, um, you know, kind of piggyback on that as we talk about it today. <laughs> so before we dive into it, um, we're going to give everybody a moment. We're going to play another song. Um, I just want to play Heal the Land because that's really what we need right now. So really God to just come through and heal the land. So I'm going to go ahead and play this song, and then after I play this song, I'm going to go ahead and let my brother just go ahead and um, and dive into it. Amen. So here we go. Yeah. 
Amen, amen. And that was again, heal the land. Amen. That's what we're really praying for God to do. Even in the midst of everything going on, just to heal the land. And I do want to encourage all of the graduates of twenty twenty who are tuning in on today that God is going to for sure heal our land. Everything that we're going through right now, that this too, this too we have had. So we um are trusting in God. And believing in God to do exactly what God is going to do, and that knowing that um, a healing is coming, Amen. Um, but to just stay strong, stand strong in everything. Um, and we do have First Lady here with us as well. First Lady, before um, I let Pastor Kirsten really go ahead and dive into the topic, um, did you want to say anything to our graduating class of twenty twenty? Congratulations to the graduating class of 2020. Um, I feel super old because I'm class of 05, but I know that it was a special day when I actually got to walk across the stage. I still remember it. I don't remember a lot of things, but I remember the day that I actually got to walk across the stage, so I know it's an important time for you all. And congratulations. And just remember, this is just day one for the rest of your lives. Amen. Amen. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to let my none other than my brother, Pastor Kirsten Hines, go ahead now and really um, give his words 
to our graduating class of 2020. Pass this on you. Good afternoon, all listeners and those who are sitting in studio with my brother, Larry Bertrand, none other than the preaching machine himself. Uh, I want to start off by saying first congratulations to the entire class of 2020. I know it's been hard and it has been rough, um, but through with prayer and with faith and with God, you can get through all of this. Uh, before I get into the subject, I always like to pray before uh, I become, I guess, what Larry would call me, the preacher machine. Uh, but I call him the preacher machine because he's a, he's a goat, y'all. But uh, Father God, we thank you right now for these young people's lives. We thank you for the careers they're going to go on and make. We thank you for the high school that they're going on to, God. And we ask now, God, to incline them academically, incline their brains, God. Give them wisdom and knowledge and all that they do. But, Father, also anoint this word and touch this word for a times such as these that it would encourage your young people and parents to keep moving forward by the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to call your attention, all of you who are listening and who will get your Bibles to the chapter of Job, and I want to look at the 19th through the 21st verse, chapter 19 through, I mean, uh, chapter 1, verse 19 through 21, and if you just give me a few minutes of your time, I promise you I'll be out of your way. If you have it, I'm going to go ahead and read it. If you have it, it reads these words, and I'm reading from the Amplified Version. It says, and suddenly a great wind came from across the desert and struck the four corners of the house. And it fell on the young people, and they died. And I alone have escaped to tell you. Then Job got up and tore his robe and shaved his head and mourned for his children. And he fell to the ground and worshiped God. And he said, naked without anything, I came into this world from my mother's womb. And naked I shall return back. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Yet blessed be the name of the Lord. When we talk about God's face, I also want to deal with this because this particular story deals with a lot of God's grace in it. And so on tonight for you 2020 graduates who are listening in on this radio station, I would like to talk about how to lose it all and still move on. I want to revisit how to lose it all and still move on. And with that being said, my friends, whether we want to admit it or not in this life, we all have to lose. We all have to see a value of loss. Yet the good news that we find out on tonight is that every loss, behind every loss, there is victory. Behind every loss, there is a gain. Behind every loss comes a great fortune of self-value. And when I think about the idea of what losing is, I think about this peculiar class of 2020. Those who have worked hard to accomplish educational gain, whether it would be a high school or college. I think about the unfairness uh, that this particular class has felt in not being able to successfully experience a middle or high school prom. I think about the athletes who were being scouted for a scholarship for college. I think about the academically inclined student who was counting on raising their GPA to get into an Ivy League college. These are the things, my dear friends, I think about when taking a loss within the class of 2020. But if we were to be honest, every loss that was experienced during this time of calamity has not been in vain. Because in this time of losing what could have been valuable memories, somebody has the testimony that I'm still here and there's still time to make a difference. Somebody's testimony on tonight is I may have lost a moment, but I've gained an opportunity. I, I may have lost some friends, but I gained a relationship with the Lord. I may have lost the chance to walk across the stage with those I know as friends for the last four years. But I've gained the testimony that even after the hell I've been through over the last few months, I can still walk, I can still talk, and I can still go forward with the plans that God has for me. 
That's why, graduates, you ought to have a different mindset on tonight because famine came into this land. And it didn't just come to the United States, but it came all over this world, and it shut down everything. It even shut down the, the, the plans that you had for your last year and your peculiar school. It came in this land hoping that you would dwell on the opportunity of a losing streak. But opportunity came behind your loss and when it came behind it it reminded you that you were not meant to be a loser somebody if you listening to me you need to repeat after me and say i was never meant to be a loser it's not in me to lose it's, it's not in me to give up it's not in me to be unsuccessful it's not in me to be depressed it's not in me to have anxiety it's not in me to feel like a failure with that being said, if I don't keep you too long, y'all pray for me tonight because I feel the Holy Ghost coming now. Need I keep you too long, my brothers and sisters, this text deals with our dear brother Job. And this familiar passage begins with a test between God and Satan. But you all know that the Bible says that the sons of God came and presented themselves before the Father. And here comes Satan walking in on the meeting. And when asked where he was coming from, the Bible says right there in the first chapter of Job that Satan responded, I came from walking to and fro in the earth. Mm, don't that sound familiar? Because Corona came and it came to and fro throughout this earth. And he said, I was walking up and down in it. And God asked of his consideration of the servant he calls Job. And then God goes on to brag on his credibility. Now, pay attention to what happens next, graduates, because I don't want you to miss none of this. I don't, I don't want none of y'all to miss this here. Satan is looking for something or somebody to get his hands on. He is looking for trouble. He is looking for somebody's plans and future that he can destroy. Uh, the, the, the scripture says it like this, that Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He is looking persistently for something to get his hands on. And his persistence created an opportunity for God to find someone credible enough to not only survive his tactics, but also to prove that no matter what year it is, the devil is still a liar. I wish I could pause here there parenthetically and tell y'all real quick, uh, tell this class of 2020 that it is by no coincidence that your story is much similar to this passage because you were anointed. Hear me here. I'm speaking prophetically into about 300 homes right now. You were anointed for a time to survive the tactics of the enemy. I don't think y'all heard me, so I need to rewind that one more time. You were anointed to survive the tactics of the enemy. You were not picked out to be picked on, graduates, but rather you were anointed to be the trailblazers of a peculiar time. And the favor that God has for you will be much more than obtaining your degree. It'll be much more than obtaining your diploma. But the favor God has for you will be one where you are not just creating a career, but you are creating wealth, and you're going to be breakers of generational curses that has laid on your family for generations. You will be you will be breakers of the lack in your families. You will be breakers of the demonic strongholds that Satan has placed on your family. You will be breakers of the things people said that your last name would never achieve. I wish I just had somebody sitting here with me uh, that was on this, this, this call that would just make some noise in your home and say, Pastor, I'm a believer, and I believe that for these young people. I believe that they're going on to do mighty things. They're going on and they're getting ready to put doctors out of place who have misused their position. They're getting ready to put lawyers out of place who have wrongly accused people of crime. They're getting ready to change the legislative, the executive, and the judicial branches because they were favored to survive the tactics of the enemy. But look at what the text says. Look at what Satan says in the text. He says, I didn't think of Job because you have protected him. But if you remove that God, I bet you he will curse you to your face. 
And those of you who are familiar with this story would know that the faith God had placed in Job was not in question. For he instructed Satan, okay, you can touch the class of 2020's possession, but you can't touch now one of them. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me in here. You can touch what Job got, but you can't touch him. And with that, Satan flung suffering at Job through all he owned by taking his riches, by taking his cattle, and by taking his land. And look at how devious the enemy was. I hope y'all listening to me out there. He allowed messy people who witnessed what he was taking come back and report these repossessions to Job so that it would become too overwhelming for him to take. Yet, the one determining factor was when Satan decided, I'm going to take the very thing he loved. He can get he can get all this stuff I already took back, but I'm gonna take his kids. That's something I know that's gonna break him. And I think I need to pause here and tell each and every one of you who are listening to me tonight, if you're going to move on from your losses, then there's a few things you have to expect. Point number one, you have to expect an attack from your envious hater. I'll say that one more time. I hope somebody is listening to me tonight with two good ears. Uh, you have to expect an attack from your envious haters. I need you adults to listen to me because this here, this here applies to you. For many times in this life, you will be attacked for the faith and the favor you carry. Y'all don't hear me tonight. You will be attacked for the faith and the favor you carry. You have to also understand that the attacks on your life will have nothing to do with anything you did, but everything to do with envy. And that amazes me tonight, y'all, because uh, it amazes me how people can hate you and they don't even know you. The truth of the matter is they see your glitz, they see the glams, they see the glory, and they don't even know the story of how you made it to this point. But if your haters knew the sacrifices you made, if your haters knew how some nights you could not eat a full-blown meal, you had to eat what we used to put together, a syrup sandwich. If your haters knew how you just had to recycle the same clothes and even though you, they didn't, even though to them it looked like you had something fresh on, you was recycling the same thing that somehow provided. If your haters knew how you survived in the midst of the calamities that you've already been in, they would shut their mouths and mind their own business. Uh, uh, your haters, I need to say this for you, though, your haters are familiar with your favor. I need y'all to repeat after me, wherever you are. Your haters are familiar with your favor. If you look back into the text, Satan knew all the accolades of Job. He says in the text that I did not consider him because look at everything you gave him. Look at everything he accomplished. Look at all the report cards that he had all A's on. Look look at all the tests that he's passed. Look, look at all the benchmarks that he's passed. Look at all the athletics that he's passed. Look at his success. He says, God, you blessed the work of his hand and gave him increase in everything he owned. He was familiar with Job's favor. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all tonight. Your enemies are familiar with your favor. They're familiar with the blessings and the anointing that's on your life. And just like Satan, they're thirsty for a chance to decrease what God has already increased in you. And I think I need to prophesy to 300 of you who will hear this word wherever you are. I need to prophesy to you that God is about to show you how popular you are in the kingdom based off the amount of enemies you have. The attack of your envious envy, your envious enemies will be nothing but a sign from God that he has granted you a favor that will make those who 
slept on you, who looked over you, who didn't think of you, not be able to stand you. So now if you see somebody who turning their nose up at you now and they got a stank attitude, you just need to look at them and say, I know favor is real and favor ain't there. So you need to understand that haters are haters because haters truly motivate you. They will truly take you to the next level. They will truly be stuck on stupid while you ride the wave of wisdom. That's why some of y'all graduated and they still stuck in the same grade, retaining the same year because they slept on the type of wisdom you had. They slept on the drive you had to get a degree. They slept on the drive you had to get a diploma. They slept on the drive you had that you used to say back in kindergarten. You still held on to your dream. Y'all remember in kindergarten, they used to ask them, what do you dream to be when you get older, when you held on to that dream that you want to be a cop, that you want to be a doctor, that you want to be a lawyer, that you want to be a millionaire, you want to be the next president. They slept on you, and now God is increasing you. And so now you can't be upset when haters look at you with some stank attitude. You just need to look at them and say, I know favor ain't fair, and it's all over me. Well, I hear somebody saying, well, Pastor, I'm tired of them hating on me. I'm tired of them attacking me. I'm tired of my name being in their mouths. But let me encourage you with the words of my boy Rico Richie. If you ain't got any haters, you ain't popping. You ought to thank God for haters. Somebody hit your neighbor, wherever you are, and say, I thank God for my haters. Had it not been for my haters, I wouldn't pray like I do. Had it not been for my haters, I wouldn't worship like I do. I wouldn't have this level of success. So, number one, you got to expect an attack from your envious haters. But number two, you got to be ready for the worst. It ain't all good. Got to be ready for the worst to happen. The Bible said that the messenger came and reported to Job that your children were eating and drinking. In other words, they was minding their business, being a family. And a great wind came and struck the four corners of the house, and it fell on your your children. It fell on the young people. It fell on class of 2020, and they died. Now, anybody who studies prolifically into the life of Job would know that Job had 10 children. Give me seven more minutes, and I'm out your way. Job had 10 children. He had seven sons and three daughters, which means at the time of their death, Job had to prepare to bury 10 children at one time, y'all. Now, I'm sure there was nothing worse than losing something you can never get back. See, land, you can get that back. Servants, you can get that back. Riches can be restored, but the time spent raising a child, I'm talking to the parents here, the time you spent raising a child, you can never get that back, which is why, young folk, you ought to rejoice for having life in times like these, because if we were to be honest, the worst could have happened to you. But thanks be unto God, you have survived thus far the worst of your times. Never before in my life, and I was born in 1992, uh, have I seen or read in the history books the type of stuff that made the world shut down like this did. Yet here we are giving God glory in the middle of the worst. And yes, in your eyes, the worst has happened. A chance to say your final farewells has been taken from you. A chance to have a spring break has been taken from you. A chance to have that final walk across the stage has been taken from you. To make that final walk through your high school or middle school hallways has been stripped from you. But you got to understand that it always won't be like this because the good news on tonight is that it got to get worse just before it gets better. Help me, Holy Ghost. You just have to hold on to your faith in the middle of hard times and allow God to be God. So, number one, you got to expect an attack from your envious haters, the worst. But three, if you're going to move on from your losses, God wants to ask you a question. He wants to know how will you respond to everything you lost? How will you respond to everything you lost? The Bible says when Job found out about his children, he didn't go on a rant in the rain. The Bible says he stripped himself of his robe. In other words, he was making a demonstration of stripping himself from his possessions. And he said, naked, I came from my mother's womb, 
and naked I'll go back there. In other words, I can't hear nothing, and when I close my eyes on this side and get ready to go to the other, I'm going to leave here with nothing. He said, the Lord has given me everything, and now the Lord has taken it away. But in the midst of it all, blessed be the name of the Lord. Job says, even though I've been through all of this hell, I can move forward because I still got a praise on the inside. Job says, I can move forward after all the hell I've experienced because I know who my God is. And that's what I'm trying to tell you, graduates. You, you got you got you gotta have a testimony and your testimony today ought to be this. You ought to praise God that you're still here to move on even after all this loss. Satan wanted to steal your joy in the middle of this pandemic. Satan wanted to break your commitment to move on to a bigger and better dream. Satan wanted to tear you down and tear your future down. But even in the middle of this pandemic, you have proven him to be a liar. And you may say, well, preacher, how do I know I proved him to be a liar? Well, look at you now. He didn't want you to graduate, but here you are now. He didn't want you to live beyond this attack, but here you are now. You're still standing. You're still alive. He didn't want you to worship after this, but here you are now tuned in to get a word from the Lord. You still have a worship on the inside. Please do me a favor as I get ready to close like a Baptist preacher, but I'm not going to hoop because I don't got to holler with me. But please do me a favor. <laughs> get you a neighbor in your house and look at your neighbor eyeball to eyeball and look at him with some power and don't and hold their hand with some anointing and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I may have lost some family and I may have lost some friends. Tell them, say, neighbor, I may have lost some church members. I may have lost out on my prom, but one thing I never lost, thank you, Holy Ghost, I never lost my praise. And that ought to be your testimony to move on even though you did not get the end of the year that you wanted, is that you never gave in to the attacks of the enemy. You never lost your praise. And so as I say farewell to the class of 2020, and I digress and I take my seat, I want to remind you, your faith Your faith has to be great in this time and this season. You were anointed to overcome these times. I need to prophesy to all of y'all and remind you, this won't be the end. That was a special anointing for those of you who were commencing in this year. What's the special anointing? I'm going to tell you. God appointed you at your birth to be leaders of nations. That is a leadership skill in each and every one of you to be a leader of a nation. I see more governors. I see more mayors. I see more presidents. I see more principals. I see more uh, city councilmen and city councilmen. I see more judges, chief of police, who are going to go in and restore God back to our government. So you need to understand something. That's why Satan didn't want you to graduate, because you can't even begin to start that kind of career if you never credibly get your diploma. Ah, y'all need to hear me tonight, because I'm walking in a prophetic vein, and I come to prophesy that each and every one of you who stay under the anointing and the yoke of the Almighty God will not only see an increased amount of success, but your job will be untouchable. You'll never see lack in your days to come because you were anointed to survive trouble. But in order to survive that which you was anointed to survive, you have to be tested with it. And that's why Corona came, and it came for your specific years, whether you're coming out of middle school or whether you're coming out of high school. It came to shut you down because you was anointed to survive trouble. And if this word bless you on tonight, if this word bless you on tonight, and I'm moving by the Holy Ghost and I'm done, and Larry, I'll take my seat and I'll resume. You can resume position. <laughs> if this word, bless you, this word bless you on tonight, I need all of you who believe in this ministry to get yourself a seed 
and cash at it to this ministry. You're not giving to me. You're giving it to this ministry because God has placed an anointing on Larry's ministry to not only sow into young people, but to send them off to school. I want y'all to, if you support this ministry, you support this man of God, cash out. Or you just know him and you want to go put it in his hand. I want y'all to cash out this ministry. Larry knows I don't take money for ministry. I come for free. Because I love God. I love the word of God. But I know God is about to send scholarships through this man of God. Through his fraternity brother, through everybody. I want you to cash out. Listen to me now. Listen to the instructions. And I want you to name your seed, my child's future. And if you're sowing and you're a graduate or you're listening and you're sowing, I want you to name your seed my future. And I want you to sow into this ministry for your future. And God says when you drop your seed into this ministry, he is going to, no matter what trouble comes, he's going to excel you above it. I want you to sow here, dollar sign, Living Springs Church. Dollar sign, L-I-V-I-N-G. S-P-R-I-N-G-S-C-H-U-R-C-H. Dollar sign Living Springs Church. I want you to go ahead and sow quickly. Don't hesitate. Don't miss this moment. Sow now. Sow for your children's future. Sow for your future. And maybe you're not graduating. Tedic word lays upon your life because you are graduating from this pandemic. So sow now, quickly, quickly. Don't be disobedient in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for these lives. We thank you for the people who was on here tonight. We thank you for those who are going to hear. We pray now over their seeds, and God, we ask that you give them that favor you have promised. God, you have never lied to your prophet, and you won't lie now. God, I ask right now, God, that these seeds be building for the kingdom, building for the people, and building for the nation. In Jesus' name. And I rest my seat. Amen. Amen. And thank you so much, Pastor Hines. We really appreciate it. And and if you know me, Job is my book. So I really, really, really appreciate that. I appreciate you coming on with us tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much for tuning in with Soaring Like Eagles with Pastor Bertrand and myself. We really appreciate you all. And remember, every Monday um, at 7 p.m. to join us here at Soaring Like Eagles. We hope you all have a great night. Thank you.